welcome back to Living History with Ted Goldsboro. And we're continuing our informative uh, interview with Dave Fish of the John Fish Company and Jewelers. And we'll be talking about the Ardmore branches and media branch of the Fish Jewelers. Uh, Dave, let's go back, let's go down to Ardmore. Sure. And tell me where you started and then moved and moved and... Well, on this map, doesn't quite show you, but the auto car was down here to the left on Lancaster Pike. And the business that my grandfather bought was from Harry Francis. And that building existed for a while until the auto car was coming into to vision, so they tore down those buildings. And at the time, we had the store then moved down Lancaster Avenue, down to Cricket Avenue, to a, a small store, uh, number two, on Cricket Avenue. The building is still there, and the, you can see the storefront, which we'll show you later. Then, in about in the late 20s, the store was now moved back up to the theater building, but only by my one senior uncle who ran that store. The other uncle that worked with my uncle in the Cricket Avenue store moved to media. Now they were independent of my grandfather. They decided they wanted to be on their own, and my mm -hmm. grandfather said fine. So they opened up their own stores uh, under their names. So that's where that was, and here is a picture of the Cricket Avenue store, uh, and this is my uncle William, and that picture right, uh, clock, hanging clock, is at our home on the wall. It's wooden. It's weather beaten and what have you, but we love it because uh, it's a little bit more part of our history. And William was the one who married Mary Craig. And he's Mary Craig. Okay. That's right. And they were sweethearts since seventh grade, at least, if not before then. This is a current picture of the store on Cricket Avenue. And you can see this is the entrance to the apartments above, and this is where the store was. Um, Obviously, nothing's changed, and it really almost looks like the same window frames and what have you. The doors have changed or what have you, but it it's, gives you just a definite picture of it. Okay. And then we move down to what now is the Philadelphia Sports Club, and my Uncle William took this front second floor uh, office for his business and uh, ran that for many, many years. Uh, and you had to go inside the arcade and walk up. Now, Ted had taken a picture of the Bryn Mawr movie theater. And this is what all these movie theaters look like. That, that, it was absolutely incredible, the arcades. They weren't huge, but they were lovely and beautifully done. And that's exactly how this, uh, the Ardmore store had looked at like at one time. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a sort of an idea. We of in, the, in the Historical Society, we were a little confused because we don't remember very well the mm -hmm. arcade in the Ardmore Theater, but when you look at different angles of this building, you can kind of see where there was a high roof exactly. in the center there. Yeah. So and that illuminated this whole arcade. Yeah, and you had other stores. It, yeah. uh, it was, you know, it was so neat. It was like a mall. A mini, mall. a mini mall. Mini mall today. Yep. Right, right. Same concept. Same concept. And unfortunately, the building has been changed so much now that you can't walk in and right. see this. And you wouldn't have seen this five years ago at the Bryn Mawr Inst Film Institute. Yes. You know, they've yes. opened that up at a great expense to bring that back. Right. So we're very fortunate, again, in Bryn Mawr to have the Film Industry yes, Institute. Yes, yes. Uh, they do some many Juliet, good... Uh, good Good fellow. Good fellow. Yes. Okay. She's done a wonderful job. <laughs> and another expansion is going on there, which everybody will hear about. Now, after, wait, wait. So we finished with Ardmore. We had a brother that went down to Media. Mm -hmm. But the Ardmore store and the Media store had broken away from the Bryn Mawr store. Correct. Correct. When you started to work for the Jewelers, you were only in Bryn Mawr? Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad, when they closed the stores in 1920, 28, I believe it was. Uh, my dad was already with my grandfather in the Bryn Mawr store. Then my dad married in 29 and continued, and my grandfather retired probably four or five years 
later and passed away mm -hmm. subsequently, mm -hmm. very soon after that from a heart attack. Mm -hmm. uh, so he died in 36. So now it was totally my father's uh, undertaking. And uh, so then I came back into this, I came to the store. Of course, we all worked as children in the store after high school uh, and also on Saturdays. And Christmas time, it was mm -hmm. busy. We were all sort of involved in it. I had two older brothers, and uh, I was the only one that uh, really seemed to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were uh, fortunate. Uh, I had gone to Hereford High School, went on to Valley Forge Military Academy, and then went into the Army for three years. So in 1960, I came out of the Army, married my wife Betty, which we've just celebrated our 50th wedding anniversary. Uh, and uh, we continue to run the business. Uh, uh, and I now have a nephew that's very much involved in the store, too. So we're really working on our mm -hmm. fourth generation. Was uh, the nephew's parents, either of those parents, involved in the store? No. The nephew is actually my wife's sister. Oh, okay. Not a son. fish. He's not a fish. Yeah, yeah. We're sort of out of the school. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you have children? Yes, we have two children. One lives in uh, uh, Maryland, and we have two grandchildren, and I have a daughter that lives in uh, New Hope. Okay. And she teaches at Springside over in Chestnut Hill. Oh, I see. So but it's neither was local. involved in the joint Neither business. one were involved in the uh, okay. store. Yeah. Now, when um, we don't have photos about this, but tell me what kinds of work you mentioned that uh, you went into estates and wound Correct. grandfather's clocks, but what else did your store do? Well. We basically, my father was a watchmaker, and he did all the watches and clocks. And then when I came in in the '60s, I got it more involved into the clock end of it. So I continued to go out on calls, three or four house calls a day, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Still, and today? Saturdays. Today, wow. We don't wind, but we used to go to homes and wind them. We used to go to the Morris Estate. Uh, up in uh, Villanova, we used to go to Waverly Heights and wind the clocks every Friday. Mm -hmm. You'd start in the in the kitchen and you'd work through the entire house. Wow. Sometimes you'd never see uh, anyone in the house, mm -hmm. depending on what time of day it was. Mm -hmm. Why Other didn't they wind their own clocks? Well, there were too many of them, and uh, and that was a period of time when you had people, service people, to do so much. Okay. Of course, the estates self-maintained themselves. They had the gardeners, the cooks the ironist, the upstairs maid, the downstairs maid, a full staff of people to run Waverly, <laughs> number one. And they grew their own vegetables and what have you. And a comment one day I asked a, a woman that was in a new resident at Waverly, I said, do you know where you are? And she said, well, I'm at Waverly. <laughs> I said, yes, but you also are in the rhubarb patch. Oh. Because then they had a very good size oh. um, garden, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so which the gardener worked on along yeah. with uh, keeping the uh, uh, property trimmed and what have you. And I think that property belonged to the president of the Pennsylvania Railroad, maybe Rao, was it? Uh, R.E.U.? No, no, she was a... Um, Waverly Heights? Waverly Heights. The, the family name when we were there was Junkin. Oh, yes. And she uh -huh. was a Ray. Uh, okay, and that's it. Mrs. Ray lived... Yeah, well, he was the president of the Pennsylvania Railroad. Correct, uh, okay. her father. Okay, okay. And their home was on the corner of Montgomery Avenue. Oh. Right across from Harcum Junior College, oh, Baldwin oh, School, oh, okay. and th that house has just been converted into yes. condominiums. Yeah, and that had been, I think, a Trumbauer, uh, an architect, a pretty famous Probably architect. Probably so. Probably yes, so. Yes. Now, Dave, we're getting down. We only a few minutes left here. Sure. Uh, we have not too much more to do, but could you tell me about some of these articles that were in the newspapers? Well, we celebrated our hundredth anniversary. Uh, back in, 18, in 1988, uh, and uh, we were honored by Long Marion Township along with the, the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and we've always been involved. My father was a Rotarian, I was a Rotarian. Uh, we've been a president, I was past president of the Business Association. Uh, we've been involved in civic associations in the community. Uh, we go to Bryn Mawr Presbyterian Church, so we've been very involved in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's 
it's just been a great area for us to grow up. And my wife came from Wayne, I came from Ardmore, we live in Rosemont. Mm -hmm. So we haven't gone very far, <laughs> but we feel we have accomplished some yeah. things. I thought I had some <coughs> pictures of uh, the church, but I, I don't see them here, so I, I think we can, oh, there there's is. one, okay. Uh, this, is, this is a church of the Good Shepherd. And uh, who, uh, who went there in your family? My grandmother and grandfather were very much involved and all the children, all eight children went there. And if you ever go into the main doors, Duncan Niles Turry, who was a, a, a wonderful uh, artisan, carved the doors mm. and you will see them and they're in memory of my grandparents. Mm. And they have uh, uh, pictures of uh, a former uh, uh, people that were uh, in the scriptures like, and as oh. a memorial okay. uh, doors okay. and they really are lovely uh, and I was in the Philippines in the late 50s and I opened up a newspaper and there was an article on Duncan Niles Terry. Oh. You never know who or where you are <laughs> going to find people but this is the yeah. existing church okay. as it is today. Okay. It's a beautiful church. But uh, after a while, your family stopped going there? Well, when my mother and father married, uh, my mother went to Radnor M.E. Church, and dad went here, okay. and they decided that they would raise us and go to a Presbyterian, Presbyterian. church. Presbyterian, okay. And that kept everybody happy, I guess, <laughs> or not happy. It's hard to say. Well, Dave, uh, we're out of time, <laughs> and uh, again, I very much appreciate Thank you so uh, much, and thank you for all the work that you do and put into this. Thank it's, it's you. A great, great. I hope that the audience appreciates uh, hearing about the fish jewelers and Bryn Mawr and the churches, and we've had a great time. Thanks, Dave. Thank you.